uh, welcome back uh, dear viewer and uh, today we are hosted uh, in uh, diabetes uh, um, Dasman Diabetes Institute and uh, Dr. Faisal Al Rifai he will uh, gonna talk uh, about the uh, uh, this uh, center uh, he is the medical director of uh, Dasman uh, Diabetes Institute Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Hello there, Dr. Yes. Uh, it's a pleasure hosting you. Uh, Thank you and very it's a much. pleasure for you to host me as well on the yeah, show. Of course. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Welcome, you very Dr. Faisal. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, as Dr. Tihal just said, this is our first episode in this uh, uh, lovely institute. Actually, it's my first time uh, to be here, although I was your neighbors for uh, many years in an um, Amiri hospital. Why don't you just talk us through the Desman? Uh, uh, institute, sure. uh, the idea behind Absolutely. it, uh, all Absolutely. the concept, all pros and cons of uh, Absolutely. that's mine. I, I think a lot of people associate with the institute as a beautiful building on the Arabian Gulf Road. It's got a prime location. Uh -huh. We're very aware of that. And a lot of people for many years were thinking, what's this building about, yes. really? So uh, prior to the inauguration, which was on, in 2006, uh, the late Emir Sheikh Jabal Ahmed Al Jabal Sawah, may he rest in peace. Uh, wanted to look at the major health issues that Kuwait had to tackle uh, moving on in, into the new second millennia. And uh, he realized that the number one priority for Kuwait and for the region was actually diabetes quite early on. The numbers are quite alarming. Uh, and I think he had the vision to realize that early on uh, and decided to establish a, an institute that would be dedicated to tackling and fighting what is now considered an epidemic of diabetes mm -hmm. here in Kuwait and, and probably particularly within the Arabian Gulf region. Yeah. Uh, so the institute started in 2006. There was a bit of a slow start, really, uh, to be honest. But the focus of the institute has always been uh, four main areas. The first would be research. So we've got a huge research focus on uh, diabetes in all of its stages. Uh, starting from basic science of, of diabetes and its etiology and moving on into uh, therapeutic uh, avenues for diabetes and looking at advanced management of diabetes. Uh, and the second prong would be treatment. So we do see patients here. Uh, a lot of people don't know that and maybe we'll get a chance to talk about uh, what kind of patients we see here at the Institute. So we do treat patients who have complicated diabetes here at the okay. Institute. Uh, a third prong that we tackle is education and training, where we educate both the public and the patient regarding diabetes, and we do a lot of training for healthcare professionals. Oh. And finally, we look at health promotion and public health, where raising awareness on a national level uh, is also a priority within the Institute. Um, is uh, diabetes, uh, the Sman Diabetes Institute deals with uh, only diabetes, or uh, you, can, uh, you do some other activities? So, so the focus is diabetes, uh, certainly, but we also look at the complications of diabetes, where we see that tackling the complications and raising awareness in oh. that regard is also an important issue. Uh, we try and start early on, so prevention is one, yeah. and then managing the diabetes itself is another, but then tackling the complications is also uh, another area that we focus on. Uh, so just, just as an example, when you think of prevention, uh, we tackle lifestyle changes. Of uh, we tackle uh, exercise, how, how we uh, educate the public and patients on the importance of exercise as part of the management of diabetes. Oh. Uh, so, in a sense, the focus is diabetes, but we look around uh, the disease itself uh, before and after. Really. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. just yeah. allow me to ask you a quick question. When you mentioned that, that you deal with the treatment, yes. uh, you kind of um, gave me an idea that at, like you like a tertiary uh, center for uh, the diabetes. Absolutely. So my question is this. Do you take referral from hospital or hospital and polyclinic or...? or yes, it's a perfect question. So yes, we do see ourselves as a tertiary center. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, we take referrals from secondary care, hospitals. hospitals. And we focus on the referrals coming from consultant diabetologists. Uh -huh. Because we feel that with this huge epidemic, it's, un, it's unrealistic for, for uh, a, an organization such as Desman or an institute such as Desman to tackle diabetes uh, single-handedly. And we realize that the primary healthcare setting is where the diabetic patient should be managed, mm -hmm. mainly. However, when it gets a bit more complicated, they go to the secondary 
level of care, which is the six general hospitals mm -hmm. here in Kuwait. And currently we only deal with MOH, so we mm -hmm. don't take patients from the private sector. Right. And then from the secondary care, in order to make that triage, if you like, process mm -hmm. uh, easier for the SMAN to manage and for the physicians to manage, we've left it at the hands of consultant diabetologists to make referrals of complicated cases of diabetes to be managed in an outpatient setting, which mm -hmm. is this one. So we don't see any inpatients. All we see is an is outpatient uh, setting for patients. Um, uh, Dr. Faisal, can you give us uh, some figures? Or do you have, uh, yeah. as this is a, you know, a center that you have many researchers mm -hmm. uh, regarding diabetes, we want to know how big is the problem yes. by figures, by yeah. facts? Uh, to be honest, it's alarming. Uh, I mean, mm. Kuwait is number three worldwide in mm. terms of the... Three or five? Uh, no, it's actually third, third based on 2011 figures and we've, we've recently known yeah. that based on the IDF, the International Diabetes mm. Federation, we have maintained uh, third rank mm. worldwide uh, after two Pacific Islands, Nauru being first and, uh, and the Marshall Island being second. Mm. And then Kuwait actually comes, uh, if you like, almost first as a well-established country if you compare it with Nauru and Marshall Island, mm. which are very mm. small mm. establishments, they're very small countries. So Kuwait is really top as a country in diabetes and the percentage is around 21%. So we're talking about one in five. One in five. So the incidence of diabetes in Kuwait is basically one in five. Okay, do you, do you, uh, do you think that this is related to, you know, increase the awareness for early diagnosis or uh, because of the, uh, lifestyle yes. and uh, sedentary yes. lifestyle? Yes, uh, so it's a combination of both. Oh, okay. uh, I think the issue was raised uh, about uh, 15 years ago in, in some major research that the number was around 13-14% at that time. So if you consider, uh, it would be realistic to think that that jump from 14 to 21 is not only based on lifestyle changes, which probably existed prior, but also early detection. W since people have become uh, aware that this is an issue, they have kept an eye out, if you like, mm -hmm. for diabetes as an illness. Uh, but definitely the lifestyle uh, lived by Kuwaitis and the lack of exercise yeah. promote the increase in this uh, incidence hugely. And there's no doubt that the two uh, go hand in hand. So what do you do what, or what have you done? Yeah toward this kind yes. of scary figure. like yes. I thought we, we are number five. No, no. And we still have a figure around 16%. Now, yeah. with the 21% means... It's higher, If absolutely. there is another three persons here or two more, one, of us, would one have of us would have well, diabetes. Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah. of us would have diabetes. Uh, so, so it's not only Kuwait. So five out of the six GCC countries are in the top ten. Wow. Okay. Except? And except Oman. It's funny enough. Okay. Uh, yeah. Number six is Oman. Uh, and I think if you visit Oman, you might, you might understand why. Uh, the, the land is different, mm -hmm. the people are somewhat different than the rest of the Gulf, and, and I think their lifestyle uh, helps that figure to be lower. Although it's not much lower, but it's still a bit lower. So I think, in general, the, the issue has been that the, the, wealth, the wealth came pretty fast. So the lifestyle changed too fast for us to accommodate to that change. Whereas in the Western world, that lifestyle change came gradually and it was accommodated by with lifestyle changes and increasing habits that are uh, positive in terms of exercising, moving away from a sedentary lifestyle into a more active lifestyle. And so here in Kuwait, that change hasn't caught up with us, really. So what we do, other than the four prongs that I discussed, we collaborate strongly with MOH to raise awareness at various levels uh, with regards to diabetes because we believe that prevention is better than cure. And so we tackle, uh, for example, we teach uh, teachers about diabetes so that they can go back to their children at school and teach them about the importance of disease and try and prevent it before it actually gets them at that age. We also have a program that was um, uh, in collaboration with the U.S. Embassy here in Kuwait, promoting a healthy lifestyle for children in school, so where we bring the children here to Despan, and we give them a day program of activities, teaching them uh, what it means to stay away from diabetes, including how to cook, how to eat, uh, how to exercise, how to find creative ways of being more active, and of course, telling them about the illness in general, so mm -hmm. that they become more aware 
going on forward. And, and it's funny that children go back home and then they teach their parents. Mm -hmm. They tell them, you know, we, we learned this, this and that, and it raises awareness at a larger level. Of course, as part of what we do here, we teach health professionals about the disease. So like you, doctor, you're thinking it's 16, now you know it's 21, you were thinking it's fifth, now you know it's third, and this is, these are things that we promote here uh, at the Institute. So we, we raise the awareness of health professionals through uh, training programs, educational activities, seminars, workshops, and we also have a postgraduate degree program here in collaboration with the University of Dundee. Uh, yeah. that teaches the health professionals from the MOH how to tackle yeah. diabetes. We started already, yes. A and we started already. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're we're yeah. in our second year right yes, now. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, lastly, you know, what is uh, your vision or your mission for Future Wise uh, regarding uh, uh, this center? Yes, yes. Our intention is, is for us to be uh, a catalyst for really the MOH, which is the biggest healthcare provider here in Kuwait, to take yeah. more action yeah. and to be involved with us in promoting how we can tackle diabetes. So really, this one can do everything. That's something mm -hmm. we've realized. So if we can build at least a model that can be replicated by the larger healthcare system, we would be happy in saying that we've achieved uh, an important objective of, of uh, being this one. Okay. So to cut it short, diabetes is number one disease in our country. Uh, I, I would say so. Yeah, I would I say so. so. Absolutely. With this figure, it will, I think, uh, overcome the heart disease. Uh, Co coronary artery disease. Yeah, I think artery artery that's uh, that's exactly uh, you know between them, yeah. first and second, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think when you look at diabetes, the the, the complications that happen yeah. are an issue that raises you know yeah. economic mm -hmm. issues and and productivity issues as a country. Yeah. That probably are larger yeah. than uh, CVD. Dr. Faisal, it's been a, a, a pleasure and we need to spend more time with you because actually I have more questions, but hopefully next episode, you have to promise us so you come back again. We need to talk more about the institution, the funding, is it independent, does it Absolutely. belong to, and what other services like ophthalmology, nephrology, is it all available in the, under the same roof yes. or do, do you send patients to uh, yes. other ins institutions? Yes. That's so, a pleasure. Uh, a pleasure on my yeah. behalf and behalf of all the, the crew, uh, thank you very much for uh, being uh, with us. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank, thank, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you.